All right, uh, so we take a look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning, the front page, and uh, the board caption or banner header would be our focus. Uh, 2023, Osiba Joe informs APC governors of bid for presidency. Now, this is really interesting. I find this interesting because there were, you know, the permutations around <laughs> those who would become out of that. Some people said, oh, it was just conspiracy theory, but it feels like all of that's coming to some reality. Yeah. Set to declare publicly today via social media platforms, very interesting, NDLE intercepts 101 parcels of cocaine uh, in children duvet at Lagos Airport. Uh, that's also what you find. And seized drug beverages or beverage in a door. Uh, this is really, really serious. Now, moving away from the board caption, you also have another header saying, Zoning, why PDP is in dilemma? Local stock market investors lose 14 billion naira in five days. Mm, quite alarming. And just before we move away from the Nigerian Tribune this morning, my, uh, you find appeal court stops AGF orders from frustrating appeal against judgment on electoral act. Gives PDP permission to appeal judgment against section 84, subsection 12. You know what that means already. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the Tribune. Away from the Tribune, we'll move on next to the Nation newspaper. Uh, Shiba Joe seems to be uh, in the news almost everywhere. Or Shiba Joe to APC governors, I'm running for president, oh, absolutely put. Uh, says he, he has informed Buhari, vice president, to declare today. Other stories are making headlines on the nation newspaper. Niger's COVID-19 cases rise by 45%. World Health Organization is saying that virus still spreading. Beside that particular story, 37 billion National Assembly renovation begins. Contractors uh, mobilized. Akira Delu's wife guns for APC senatorial ticket. Why PDP should not abandon zoning by George. All right, uh, Electoral Act 84, subsection 12, appeal court stops some Malami. 2023, sudden PDP aspirants clash with Saudi's governors. Uh, more stories on the nation newspaper. Nigeria's uh, go through pain for NIN registration. Insecurity won't stop polls, says Isaac. Those are all of the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation newspaper, we take a look at the Daily Independence, federal government to reserve uh, Lagos Abuja International Airport for new national carrier. And thus, uh, the bold caption, AON warns against plan, converses national debt, stakeholders stay, say government is in order. These are the riders you find underneath, and just uh, also another bold header you find, falling oil production tapped, falling oil production and tapped compound Nigeria's FX woes. Uh, we're talking about the foreign, foreign exchange and... Uh, you also find the NIN SIM linkage. Serap gives Buhari 24 hours to unblock 72 million phone lines. <laughs> it's really interesting. Bandits kill Meti Allah chairman for others in Abuja. Bandits kill Meti Allah chairman for others in Abuja. Kidnap several and burn houses in Plateau community. Appeal court restrains federal government from frustrating appeal on electoral acts and grants PDP plea to challenge the judgment. Afeni Ferry asks Buhari to recall retired security operatives to help tackle insecurity. And uh, Ekwere Madu raises the alarm over plot to stop his Guba bead. These are the stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. Leadership is our next uh, port of call. 2023, finally, Oshibajo joins presidential race, raising stake to new level. With some riders there, VP to ride on deep bonds, relationships with state governors, astute politicians across party divides, hosts APC governors to Iftar at his Aguda residence. Now, Infra Corps begins operation with 163 billion naira in transportation. Uh, Buhari program for leadership funding chairman's mother starts today. 
troops kill 18 East Wap terrorists in Lake Chad Basin. 2023, Jonathan's Kinsmen warned against propaganda over ex president's tenure. PWC rates E Naira first in Global Digital Currency Index. Uh, let's see if we can take uh, some more. PMB governors rejoice with Dangote at uh, 65. Bandits kill Mieti Allah, chairman, four others in FCT. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the leadership newspaper. It's good to have you join us, Okunabo and Kataria, once again. Good morning. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Justice. Good morning to you, Okunabo. All right, Okunabo, let's take a look at, you know, the papers this morning. I mean, uh, the ones dominating all of the dailies is the interest of the vice president for the seat of the president. Uh, I mean, what do you think about this? The vice president is... Um Eligible, is also eligible. He has the constitutional requirements in the Nigeria, and aside from that, he has the constitutional requirements to contest for the office of the president. I mean, if he had it, he would have been a vice president to start with, because the qualifications of the president is the uh, same as that of the vice president. It's only going to make the race interesting, especially now that you have. Uh, the Minister for Transportation, you have David Omaye, you have the Vice President, you have Atiku, and these are big weeks, you know. These are people with a not political cloud. So the problem he might face is with Tinibu, who might see him as a traitor, being uh, one of his loyalists. But the mistake a lot of people also make is that Tinibu was instrumental to the margins of the Vice President. That's not true. That's meant that true. That has been that perception has been corrected. So, in summary, the vice president has joined the race. He has the right to so join. It is now left for the APC members to vote for him or not uh, on the day of their primary. If it succeeds, well, fine. Then he has to face Nigeria. If it doesn't, that will be the end of his uh, presidential ambition. In other words, the end of his ambition to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I, it's a welcome development, no doubt about that. You can't stop it, except there is any breach in the Constitution. But save that, you can't stop it from contesting. Only two persons can stop it, the APC members, the APC delegates at the primary, and Nigeria at the general election. Oh, but, but it is interesting. Well, it, it, but it, it is a competent person, I can tell you that. It's competent, he has the capacity. He might not have the political reach, but he has what it takes upstairs to lead this country. He does. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was going to say that um, another interesting dimension to all of this is the approach that he is using. You know, over time, most of these um, politicians, when they make the declaration, it's either they address the press or they address uh, a mammoth crowd, uh, you know, packed with um, supporters and party loyalists. But from what we understand, um, the vice president is looking in another direction. I, we hear that uh, he is going to, you know, post uh, a recorded uh, video, you know, of his uh, intention to social media. Uh, how does how do you see that, really? Well, we all have an idiosyncrasy. I mean, uh, my modus operandi might be different from your own modus operandi. Uh, whether he addresses the press or not, the basic truth is that he's going to declare. And after declaration, he cannot shy away from the press. Because the media definitely the major instrument with which you are going to communicate with the people. So I am not really bothered about people declare. Say Bruce and Mitchell sure went to the stadium to declare. A lot of people declared in rooms, some in governor's offices and so on and so forth. So everybody has his own style. And that is going to declare via a recorded uh, press statement or uh, briefing or whatever does not really insulate him from subsequent questions from the media and from Nigeria. So I'm not really bothered about how he's going to declare. I think we should be concerned right now with those, the, the capability and ability of those that are declaring and make our choices from uh, the law. Because what matters is somebody who can navigate the country uh, through this process of uh, out of this uh, 
mess that will find our culture. Nigerians are really dying on daily basis, you know, as a result of uh, bad leadership by President Muhammad Buhari. The Vice President, a lot of people might say it will rub up on it. Uh, but I strongly disagree. The only the only minus there is that people will say, why didn't you resign if you are not too comfortable? But you all know that deputies and vice presidents are really spent higher. They really don't have a say. They just they could advise. They are best uh, 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 they are just advisors to their principles. So uh, and in a few months the president was out of the country. We saw what the vice president did. To a large extent, he exhibited his ability and capability. So I don't have a problem with uh, how he's going to declare. That shouldn't be an issue. Because he's definitely going to face Nigeria. If everything will not be recorded at every point in time, he's definitely going to face Nigeria. So let's not bother ourselves with how he's going to declare. Let us bother ourselves with what he has to offer to Nigeria. Well, uh, very, I mean, points that you have made uh, seems valid to some extent, but a lot of people are concerned with that particular stance. It feels like, you know, the president himself is rubbing off on him. Uh, because if you notice in recent times, the president has not had one-on-one -on -one with Nigeria. We're talking about, you know, having, uh, you know, most times having a live coverage. And so it feels like, you know, there's a pattern here. The vice president intends to uh, declare his intention publicly and he decides to put up a recorded message, so it calls for a lot of concern. But we'll not dwell on that. We'll just move away quickly. Okay, no, but let me quickly address that message. Let me quickly address that in just one minute. Well, I agree. I think, I think from the point you just raised, uh, it, it, it is definitely going to uh, be a cause of uh, worry for Nigeria. It is going to throw the line of its principle. But let us also not forget, I'm not holding great for the vice president. Whenever I'm on air, I like to be as just and as frank as I can. Let us also not forget that uh, if he's going to do this, then it's uh, an anomaly because the man is somebody that is always talking to Nigeria. He's always addressing people. So I don't think he's going to behave like Mr. President. Probably for some one reason or the other, he has decided to opt for this. But I don't think Mr. Vice President is uh, the kind of person that will keep talking to Nigerians by proxy or will always have a recorded message for Nigeria if eventually he emerges as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I don't see the surprise president doing that. I mean, he's trying to like him, to expose that highly intelligent for that rubbish. That's absolutely not. Okay, but let's move away quickly from that and look at the leadership newspaper. Uh, it talks about, you know, bandits attack. Uh, you have bandits kill Meti Allah chairman and four others in Abuja. And also, you also have reports saying that bandits kill, raid and kill several persons in Plateau community. This is really, really... Um, getting out of hand? What exactly are we doing wrong? How can we salvage the situation? Well, the concatenation of deaths and killings in this country has uh, assumed apocalyptic dimension. And uh, they, we still add this thing to... We're talking about the FCT but now. I can tell you. Sorry? I mean, I, I just want to emphasize that we're looking at the federal capital territory. That's what I'm saying. I said in the country, it's not just the federal, we cannot restrict it to the federal capital territory. Because if you do that, uh, that will be, uh, how will I be informing the public? Because it's all over the country, not just federal capital territory. To the end today, it happened in the federal capital territory. That thing yesterday, it, just, it did not happen just in the federal capital territory, but that is what was reported. The killings uh, take place every day. Uh, uh, I don't know how else we are going to analyze before we are going to describe this, because it's, we almost sounded like a broken record. It is simple. I have always said the federal government is complicit. And the federal government is complicit simply. And most of these bandits do this carry out with daring acts in order to prove to the federal government that they cannot be contained. And to a very large extent, I agree with that. The federal government is complicit. Why is the federal government complicit? You have all the say. Look at the budget for defense. And this money that are released to uh, uh, the defense ministry and subsequently to the various. Uh, uh, in the arms of, uh, uh, I, wonder, I, think, I hope they are called the arms of uh, military. So, that is the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, and so on. Now, what matters is not just the money, not even the equipment. I give you a story. There was an incident in River State. That was in 2006. And we had an assistant commissioner of police, of record memory. He eventually became a, a commissioner of police in later State. It would be unfair to mention, because he has uh, a family behind. My very, very good friend uh, for that time. And uh, what happened was that this 
militants, you know, where we did have on the streets of Port Harcourt. I was in my office when I called him. I said, oh, my brother, this is what is going on. And he said, eh, okay, no problem. Don't worry, we are moving in. Do you know what? After 30 minutes, I called him again. He said, don't worry, we are moving. the APC is giving us problems. We are moving in. After one hour, I called him again. He said, are they there? I said, yes, they are now leaving. He said, my brother, these are people that we are armed by politicians. And you want to send my men to go and die for nothing. I'm telling you a true life story. You know, so the, it has nothing to do with the provision of um, they just got in what what jet or whatever jet, all kinds of names they call them. It has to do with the determination and willingness to contain these people. Is the federal government ready? No, the federal government is not ready. First and foremost, they said they were not Nigerian. Now they are Nigerian. Now, even if they were not Nigerian, you are in a 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 in so even if they were not there, that was not an excuse whatsoever. But even if they were not there, how can you say, okay, so we, we have the force and confidence giving you our, our life, so apart from God, to protect. And you fail, and they come up block as an excuse. The Saudi chiefs were relieved after six years of performing and fish money. They were relieved and rewarded, rewarded with an personal appointment. So where is the parent there? Where they, and even their successors went ahead to say, they cannot see, there is nothing to show that the money that located will be used for that purpose. NSA said that, the assessors, the new services said that. What happened? They rewarded them. So, as I tell you now, this militancy and banditry is now a, a gravy train to Nigeria. A lot of people are feeding fat on it. And so it will not end. Where is Gumi today? Gumi, where is it? A lot of people are feeding fat on this thing. And that is why this, this thing is progressing day by day. There are people who are enjoying the major beneficiaries of this crisis going on. Just like when we had the uh, militancy problem in River State. A lot of people benefited from it. I can tell you that authoritatively, you know, give me one billion naira, I'm going to talk to them. Give me two, oh, three million, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to do this. Then they see fire for about two, three days. Then they strike again. When that man exhausts his pocket, he, he talks to the militants, they strike again. Then after uh, two weeks, as I told you now, give me, let me start talk to them. So at that point, what the leaders want, at that time, what they wanted at that time, was a situation where they can just control. At least two, three days, they do not look at if they are incapable. Two, three days, then after that, they strike. And even the government, they are making because they were using, abusing the uh, security force. And they were asking for more. Security force, rather. And they were asking for more. So it's not a great trade, And that is why this thing cannot come to an end. Unless you have somebody that is willing, that is determined. If you have a president that is willing and determined, they going to contain this. It's right. exactly been, and most of the president is a retired major general. NSA is a retired major general. What are we talking about? Technically, they can contain this, but they don't have the willingness to so do. And that is why this thing is taking a different dimension. All right, Jopuna, but let's stay with the Daily Independent um, newspaper. I know it's been seven days since the uh, federal government um, asked uh, you know, telecom operators to buy, you know, SIMs that are not linked to NIN, and uh, there are reactions right now. The Daily Independent captions it this way, NIN SIM linkage, Serb gives Buhari 48 hours to unblock 72 million phone lines. How do you react, Jopuna, why will you give him uh, 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 the moratorium to, to unblock? Why should he unblock? They are the one in Nigeria. That's the problem we have in this country. We need real education. Don't forget that they kept moving the dates, the deadline. I think this thing has been for over a year. You just sit down in your house. You are not bothered because the first deadline was moved. The second deadline was moved. So you just... Look, let me tell you the average Nigeria. You go to... You see on the road. No parking, no stopping. If there is no policeman, you see the average Nigeria will spark and stop. When it arrested you here, I just wanted him to disembark immediately. I didn't even know that it was going to cause traffic. But if you see the policeman with a whip or a gun, he will not stop. We are very lawless. So you had enough time. At a point, the main centers were almost empty. People were not going. Why didn't you not register? I'm also a victim, I will not lie, but I will not blame the federal government for this. We have enough time. If they extend the date today to next year, Nigeria will still not register. So let it be done. Let them block. 
They did not completely prohibit you from using your lines. They always said, go and register. Mm. It's as simple as that. So go and register. Why won't you register? What's the problem with your registration? So I don't have a problem with that. No alternative. The federal government should not honor any stupid alternative. Let it be so. Let us all register. But, but on the other hand, if you, it feels like the process is entirely not smooth because um, you have a lot of persons who have actually, I mean, there are several people who have the number. And so the process will require that you have the number. There should be some linkage. Uh, that's when you connect the number of the NIN to your SIM card. And uh, the, the, that's the process, of course. But um, some persons have actually experienced this hiccup, and so they have the numbers over time, but the linkage process seemed to be a major issue. And, uh, you know, the question now among Nigerians is whose responsibility should it be? I mean, is the um, NCC in the know of this? Because the linkage would have to be a responsibility of the, you know, the telecommunication or the service provider that each of the subscribers are using. And so I really don't know if the government is also paying attention to the other side of the divide of the challenge that a lot of Nigerians are going through. So it's one thing to say you bar the lines. What about the process? Is the process entirely smooth? Uh, is there efficiency in the process? Well, I see this. I see this as a special. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. I see this as a special reason. You know, I mean, uh, using this as, as more or less as a substitute. If you were actually registering, or you had the intent to register, you would have realized this long before now. I would have lost your complaint. Why is it that you're lodging the complaint as an interdiction? That's the issue. That's the conundrum there. If you knew that you had this challenge, you would have brought, uh, brought it to the attention of, of the authority. And you have lodged complaints long before now. We are hearing this because they have prohibited them. They've been banned. This, this is a, cha now, this is a challenge. Do? What okay. did you do? Look, the point I'm making, for example, now, eh, Messi, you just got admission into the university and you're having issues with registration. Are you just going to sit back and wait for when the deadline is passed? That is the issue. Uh, open a bar. This, this is the first time I'm here today. I don't know if you're aware of this fact. No, so, 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 but, issue. so but we can, why is it an issue now? Why do they have to contemporize it now? That is the problem. So what I'm trying to tell you because, now, or what the issue right yes. now is, this is an issue that's been going on. And you know how we can be with the people. Uh, you know, after one or two try, then you give up on the entire process and say, okay, eventually they sort it out. That is the point I made. Did they draw the attention of the authority? They did. I, I'm not completely absorbing the authority. But what I'm saying is, in Nigeria, if you don't take certain drastic steps, Nigeria will never comply. We all know this. Let us be fair to ourselves. Now that they have done this, there might be a window. Because of the excuse you've just advanced now, they might say, "Okay, let's give one week maximum to, and also allow the uh, federal government to rectify whatever problems they're having, the glitches or whatever." Fine, but I bet you, Messi, I'll still come back here to tell you that if today seven million Nigerians are not registered, I'll come back here to tell you five million Nigerians are yet to be registered. Because what they extend, for example, this is Monday. They extend to next week Monday. A lot of people will want to go register on Friday or on Saturday. Why? Why would you start the process today? That is the Nigerian problem. Extend it to next year, you still have problems. Yes, we call on the authorities to address whatever problems they have. We agree. But if it happens with even voters' registration, during voting, there are issues. And INET keeps updating, keeps improving on them. So it is not new, it is not novel, it is not strange. But if you extend the deadline from today, Monday, to uh, uh, the uh, first week of uh, uh, April, May, I'm telling you that if you say May 3rd, on May 2nd is when you have the mad rush to do their registration. And after May 3rd, they come up with all kinds of excuses and stories. There is no perfect system in the world. We should not always blame the government. We also have a role to play in ensuring some level of sanity and decorum in this society. We so, are completely uh, lawless. Uh, uh, open up. Absolutely. I use it to a point as example. But I know, now that I'm going to I pray that the authorities will also take cognizance of it and address it. But that is not a, a, a reason for anybody. You can't imagine the number. You registered. I registered on one or two of my lines. I didn't register on this other one. 
I'm also a pessimist. I'm also a victim. But Open about the tire. Tire. We, we need to move away, away from this now, so I so we can back. check out what the. <laughs> Open a bank Tara. We need to move away from this. I know Justin is, you know, okay, no to problem, come no with his question <laughs> because we're out of no time. Problem. But I mean, the fact that Nigerians are lawless because Nigerians outside of Nigeria are very law abiding, and it just shows that you know the system itself has actually encouraged <laughs> lawlessness. Uh, but, but we move away, Justin. Right, you know, let me hand it over to Justin. Let's do some <laughs> other stories. Uh, but it is interesting. Uh, the what we read this morning still on the Tribune newspaper, the NDLEA. Yeah, it's as though the these are uh, uh, people who uh, do illicit drugs are looking for very innovative ways to uh, conceal the crime. But uh, the caption here, NDLEA intercepts 101 parcels of cocaine in children duvets at Lagos Airport, seizes drugs, beverages in Edo State. Open up. Open. The, the line is breaking. Don't have this summarizing. It's actually okay, the, summary right, summary. the summary right now is that the NDLEA, they did a seizure and that they intercepted a 101 passes of cocaine, you know, concealed in children's duvets at Lagos Airport. They also seized drugs, beverages in their do state. Oh, oh, you know, you know, every criminal will resort to, yeah, criminals will definitely resort to various experience to ensure uh, that their businesses, their free, to ensure the tribes. It's normal. They are going to circumvent uh, processes and so on. I, I, don't, I don't blame the criminals for doing that. They are already criminals, but you should expect they will do that, you know. But we should also commend the NDLA, because I think after Banai, I don't know how young you are there, Ben. <laughs> I, 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 I remember Banai, I, I know him, I, yes. <laughs> Concerning somebody who's not the day you Bama Yi. <laughs> well, I remember Bama Yi, Major General Bama Yi, I think of blessed memory now. You know, that was when the NDA really had respect, commanded a lot of respect, you know. True. And after that, it became, it's like, uh, come to trust, come to sign it of Libya. It's a bit of limbo. Nobody really feared the NDA, it was not even an issue. After that, we had NASDAQ, depending on, uh, during the, uh, time of Dora Fili and so on. So Buba Mawa uh, probably is drawing strength from his military background. Buba Mawa is doing exceedingly well, exceedingly well, and should be commended. Uh, these are stories that are news to a lot of Nigerians now, especially the younger generation, because before now, these drug barrels had their way. But Buba Mawa is giving them a tough fight. Uh, they have made these discoveries. I, I pray that the bad heads in NDLA and those that have been arrested will be made to face the wrath of the law that will serve as a deterrent. But we can never completely eliminate uh, the drug business in any, anywhere in the world. We can be a very large extent, minimize it, reduce it, but we can never ever eliminate the drug business. And uh, we are talking of doobies today, we are talking of beverages tomorrow, we are talking of. Uh, Next tomorrow, I can even you be very much surprised that they, because they're in general, they will come with tissue paper and you say, Oh, they've improved on your Savia. Oh, he's all nice, so thick, not knowing that they are flooded with drugs. That is the truth because they are actually smart. You must be a very intelligent man to be a successful criminal. And you also have, you must also have the criminal intelligence to be able to arrest or fight crime. That is the truth. So, I commend the NDLA. They should be commended for their efforts thus far. Uh, they've made Nigeria proud so far. Uh, the speed assessment probably is as good or even better, but because it was not always in the news. And what is not in the news is not known. Because it was not always in the news, so probably Nigerians are not aware of uh, what they are uh, success. But as for Buba Mawa, I commend him tremendously. He's doing his best. And I just pray that the federal government. Uh, or the executive and the presidency will not do anything that will steal his efforts to truncate his efforts. Whatever finances he needs, they should release to him, although he has to account for them. But Nigeria should also be very wary. I can tell you there are a few times I bought stout, and uh, what I drank was practically poison, maybe crude oil or something like that. So we need to encourage all these agencies, such as NDLA, NASDAQ, and so on. I'm not really impressed with NAFTA, I can tell you that, but that, that's for another day. I'm not really impressed. Uh, 
Uh, but let us commend the NDLA boss, Buba Mao, and also encourage him to do more. Because when you tap somebody at the back for things a little, he might put in more effort to also impress you for that. So I commend him. I commend him. All right, open up on Kataria. We, we have to let you go at this point in time, and we do appreciate you and your thoughts this morning on the papers. Uh, we look forward to having more of you uh, share your thoughts this morning, or always on the show. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. Thank you so much, Oponabo. And uh, away from off the press, uh, we are going back at uh, this day in history, and uh, let's see what happened today, being um, April the 11th.